now we're going to take a look at the primary uh, crop details um, tab. So this is the tab that has all the details about the crops you're going to grow. And like I said, this can do up to 11 crops uh, for, for uh, a season. Now, technically, you can change these crops uh, throughout the year. So you could maybe you're growing arugula for part of the year and these are all full. And then you decide you want to grow something else. And so you replace arugula with something else. And so over the course of the year, you can grow 15 crops. Uh, but what that will do is mess up some data. Um, so uh, there's ways around that. and We'll look at that. But generally, uh, essentially, what this means is you can only produce 11 crops at a time with the crop planner. But over the course of a season, you could produce many more. So here's our first uh, notes field here. So this is one where there's a lot of information. Uh, several of the uh, comments in here are quite robust. So they just give you a lot of information about what's going on here. And they're generally the questions you're going to ask. But I'm going to break things down for you here now. So we have room for 11 crops. As you list the crop here, so you notice there's a lot of green cells here, which means this is where we're entering a lot of data. And at the bottom, there's just a few calculations. So this is an important input page because this crop information is going to feed the rest of the uh, spreadsheet. So you enter your crops up here, and these names copy elsewhere. So once you've entered them once, you don't need to enter them again, and you don't ever want to change your crop names anywhere else. You only want to do it on this tab. This is your master crop tab, so don't change them anywhere else. Okay, so things you need to look at. So all the instructions are here for these things. I'm going to stay away from them so they don't keep popping up. So uh, first thing is your seeding rate. Now, even though you might do your seeding by volume, like just grabbing a scoop of seed and putting it on a tray, uh, you're going to do your calculation in, in, uh, by the weight because we buy seed by weight. And so we want to know the value of that seed when we, when we sell it. Um, this spreadsheet accounts for, uh, for you having three different sizes of packaging, a small, medium, and large size. And, they're at and here they're 125 grams, 275 grams, and 450 grams. So 450 is about a, a pound, and this is about uh, one-third, a little less than one-third of a pound. So uh, I, I, for production, only use two sizes, small and large, but some people like a medium, so it's in there. The next thing is pricing. There's two uh, pricing options for you here. One is your wholesale price, and one is what I just call your small sale size price or your retail price. <clears throat> so your wholesale price might be what you sell to a grocer and this price might be what you sell to at your farmer's market or something. So these, these you can change uh, whatever pricing works for you. So we've got that for small, medium, and large here. Then we have tray prices by wholesale and retail as well. So that's all pricing and sizes. The size is important because this is going to determine um, how many trays you're going to need based on a projected yield in order to get your orders uh, fulfilled. So then we have our projected yield per tray. Uh, these numbers in here are fairly valid, uh, but they're going to change with uh, different varieties, uh, different cropping systems. So you can start with some plug-in values, but over time you want to use your own values. So when we get to the crop planner, it's going to start at 625 grams per tray of sunflower, but if I notice over time that I'm producing more or less than that, then I'm going to adjust those numbers so my crop planning is much more accurate. So what we have here is a model, and in order to make our model more um, accurate, we need to be revising it all the time. And really, the only things we're going to look at revising are going to be our projected yield and maybe our sowing rate, because we may find we're using too little or too much seed, or as we get a new batch of seed in, it requires a different sowing rate uh, than the seed before. So here um, we get our first calculation. And a term I'm going to use is the small unit equivalent. That means I don't think of things in large sizes and medium sizes and small sizes and trays. I think of everything in small size. I want to know how many small units things are worth. So I know a large bag is about 3.7 small units. Um, so I like that because I just think it just gives me this nice number. So I can get about five small units of sunflower per tray or five clamshells per tray. So that's the unit I work in and it, there's calculations there um, throughout. If you want to work in grams or ounces or something else, that's totally fine. Uh, we've found this is just the easiest way. It's like, oh, we, you know, we harvested 300 small units worth this harvest. Last harvest was only 280, but we had the same number of trays. 
So it's just that it's a really easy number to work with, and often you're dealing with a lot of that unit size. Uh, it's a farmer's market size, it's a grocer size, um, and so it's, it's one that's going to become familiar. So uh, do with that what you will, it's just what I recommend. Uh, this section here is to give you a sense of the cost of your seed. So for example, I, we buy um, sunflower seed in 10 kilogram bags. The price with shipping for most batches is about $72.99, which is $7.30 per kilogram and equals 99 cents per tray. And per tray means 135 grams is 99 cents worth of seed. So the calculation is done for you. You can see each of these crops have their own value for seed. Uh, based on how much is sown and, and the, the, um, uh, the price of the seed. Something like wheatgrass is uh, fairly inexpensive, arugula, arugula and sunflower you can see are a little on the higher end. So these calculations are all done for you. Once again, only enter stuff into the green and let the orange calculations happen for you. So over time, you probably are going to change your crops. Uh, that might be on a season to season basis or even weekly. So this section here just gives you a place to, to sort of archive them. And so we've got some of the ones that we listed up there here. Uh, there's a few extras here. So this here doesn't feed anywhere else in the tray. It's more just a, an archive for you. So if you do decide to grow kohlrabi or something or buckwheat that you haven't grown in a while, you'll have a quick reference here to what those numbers are. Uh, there's lots of different figures uh, online. Uh, I don't give them because I just find they're too widely varied. Uh, so I, I suggest doing your own search, doing a little asking around, and they're very, very easy numbers to come up with. The numbers I have in here are ones I just needed to use to show the calculations. So you might end up having this whole thing filled with crops over time, and that's just a good reference for you to make changes really, really quickly. So this is our primary crop detail sheet. Once again, this is really important because this information about your crops feeds the, all the rest of the spreadsheet. And so um, you can change this over time, but don't change the numbers elsewhere. Basically, this is the only place you want to change them, with some exceptions, and we'll show you that. So hopefully that's a good overview there, and now let's uh, move on to the next section.